Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install legacy versions of WordPress. The immediate question is, of course, why would anyone ever want to do that? Don't we want to run the latest version? And yes, that's true, but if you want to test the WordPress toolkit, you may need some older versions so that you can upgrade them. And I will explain the WordPress toolkit in another video, and this one is kind of a preparatory video that you can use to install legacy versions of WordPress. We can't use the APS installer for that because it will always install the latest version of WordPress that's available, which is of course recommended for production servers, but for testing servers, if you want to give the WordPress toolkit a go, I'm afraid we won't be able to use it. This is how you install a legacy version. Where do we get them from? Well, WordPress maintain an archive of everything they've ever released. That's at wordpress.org forward slash download forward slash release archive. And these are all the versions that you can download there. The WordPress Toolkit supports anything from version 3.4 and up, so you can download any of these. And there's three versions that you can download, the zip archive, the tarball, and an IIS zip. Let's just use the zip file here. WordPress 4.0 is just around the corner. Release Candidate 1 was released today, so WordPress 3.9.2 is currently the latest version of WordPress. So I think I'm going to go with WordPress 3.7 here. Download the zip file. And we're done here. Next, let's head over into Plesk. I'm going to install this on my fictitious customer's subscription here, domain.com. And I'll open this control panel in another tab. Let's head over to Files first and into HTTP Docs. This is where his current website resides. We don't need any of those, so we'll remove them. But the WordPress archive we've just downloaded, let's upload that to the server using the Upload Files one. That's that. Thanks to the integrated file manager, I can extract all the files, so no need for an FTP client. In fact, we don't need the zip file anymore, so I'll remove that to save some space. And we're left with one folder called WordPress. I like to look after several WordPress installations, so I'll choose to use three of them. And I will install them in a subdirectory each. So I'll create two new folders. one and two and the WordPress directory, I'm going to rename that into three. So that should give us three WordPress installations. One last step, I'll go into the folder number three, mark all the files, and I'm going to copy them over to both our directory number one. I'm going to do the same thing and copy them over into our directory number two. Therefore, we have three independent installations. Great. Now let's set up a database that's under websites and domains. And over here under databases, I've got nothing. No database, no database user. I could create a user and then go and create a database. But if I create a database, it will offer me to create a user as well, so I will choose to do that. For the sake of brevity, I'm just going to create a single database which will hold the tables for all three WordPress installations, and we're just going to use a different table prefix there. I want to give my database user the same name as the database, and once I've created a password that suits me fine, I'll go and show it and copy that value. Click OK and both the user and the database will be created. That's our files in the correct place and that's the database set up. Now we need to run the WordPress installer manually, not the APS one, and we do that from another browser window. Domain.com is currently my domain and if I bring that up because there's no files in the HTTP docs directory, I get the Apache 2 test page. If I have a go into subdirectory 1, the WordPress installer greets me and says, hey, we don't have a WP config file. Would you like to create one? Sure do. And then we'll run the WordPress installer manually. It prompts me for all the details it needs, so I'll go, let's go. Database name was in fact WordPress test. Username was also WordPress test. Password was this complex thing here. Database host was a local host. And since we're in subdirectory number one, my table prefix for this demonstration is also gonna be one. 
I'll hit submit. WordPress tells me it's happy and we're going to run the installation. That's our first WordPress website set up. Now we're going to run this for website number two and number three. And the only thing that you need to be aware of is that you need to change the table prefix to something else. Don't set it to one, set it to two underscore and three underscore. And that means all your WordPress websites are now installed. Let's see if it all worked well. Let's go from the back and check site number three. And there it is. Default theme is 2013. Let's check site number two, same thing. And site number one, also working well. Let me try and log on. Looking good. The old layout that we used to love. I'm not going to update this, we're going to do that with the WordPress toolkit in the next video. I hope this was helpful. Do this on a test server just before trying out the WordPress toolkit. Don't forget to watch all the other videos in this series. If you like this video, please share it with friends, family and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now. I'll see you next time.